This was going to be a quick video on how to create a shadow in Silhouette Studio. However, while I was going through and creating the design, I realized that it was going to be very difficult to align the layers in the finished product. So I decided that I would add on how to use registration marks and not the print and cut registration marks, the other registration marks. So I added that in, and then when I got to the actual weeding of the project, I realized that it was a nightmare and proceeded to show you how to do a little bit of reverse weeding. So this quick little video has ended up actually a three for one. I hope you stay around for all of the good parts. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette. You found your way to Silhouette Success. I do hope that you're going to join our little community. Now, as I have said already, there is a ton of stuff to learn in this video, so let's do this. In Silhouette Studio, I have my page all set up. I'm going to cut this out on the Cameo 5 using the 12 by 12 mat, and I have my media size set to letter because I am going to cut my logo out and put it on the back of a clipboard. So I know that letter size is going to be just perfect for this project. Today I want to create a shadow effect, so I'm going to come over and open up the image effects panel and I'm going to go over to the very last tab. That is the shadow tab and you do need designer edition or higher to use this feature. Once we are in the shadow tab, you can see here you have the choice to cut around the shadow or not. If you are doing a print and cut project or a sublimation project, you would not want to cut around the shadow. Next, we have the shadow type. There is no shadow, dynamic shadow, and fixed shadow. Now you can choose either one of these unless you're going to rotate your image after you have your shadow set. A dynamic shadow acts as if the light source is up over here and shining down this way. That's a little bit hard to see. Let's change the color on that and we can zoom in a bit as well. Okay, so you can see that the shadow is set as if the light source is up over here and shining down. If we rotate this, you can see that it still appears that the light source is up here and the shadow has just kind of followed my logo around. Now with a fixed shadow, if you turn your element around, it's not going to follow like that. It's just going to stay in the same position. Let's set this back to zero rotation so that it's straight. Okay, so this is exactly how I want my shadow to look, but I could use the X and Y here to change the offset on it. I could bump it down a little bit and you can see when I press the arrow keys how that affects the shadow. You can also choose to pan the shadow. This little grab handle pops up and you can just move it around until it looks just the way you want it. When everything is all set you want to release the shadow and at that point you can select the shadow and pull it away. We don't want to do that, so we're going to hit the undo button. We're going to go over to the send panel for just a minute to take a look at what's going on there. Now, when I am working with the shadow effect, I like to cut by fill color. You can see here that the entire logo is going to cut out, but the entire shadow is also going to cut out, and that is not what we want. We just want the shadow part that is showing to cut. So let's go back to our design screen, select both layers, and open up our modify panel. At this point, I want to subtract all. Now I can pull the top layer away, and you can see that it's going to cut properly now. We're not going to have the shadow layer underneath the top layer. Let's undo that. Now that we have it so that it's going to cut out properly, we need to make sure that we are going to be able to line this up properly when we go to layer the actual vinyl. So we're going to create some registration marks. I don't really like calling them registration marks because they get confused with the print and cut registration marks, but that's what everybody calls them. Anyway, we've drawn out a rectangle and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that and take it over to the other side. Select both of those, 
line up the bottoms, right click and group. And since we are cutting by fill color, we want these to be a different color. I'm going to choose red because nothing else in my design is red. And we can bump that up just a little bit. So we've got a little bit of room in between those and the design. Now, when we go back to the send panel, you can see that I have my black layer, which is the shadow. I have my blue layer, which is my logo, and my red layer, which is my registration marks. I am going to send this through on two different mats, and I am going to keep the red box checked. This is going to be on at all times. I'm going to send the first mat through with just my logo checked. So I will uncheck the shadow and it's going to cut the registration marks and my logo. The second time through, I will check the shadow box and I will uncheck my logo. So only the shadow and the registration marks cut. I do need to switch all of these over to vinyl mat. And I'm also going to bump my blade up by one for all of those. When you're cutting by color, you click on this box here and then this box turns black. So you know you're adjusting the settings for the black material. Bump the blade up, click on the blue material. This has switched to blue. Bump the blade and the same for the red. We need to get our media ready and loaded, and then we will be able to send that through. As I said before, I am running each of these through on a separate map. So I'm cutting my logo out of white vinyl with the registration marks. And I'm going to cut the shadow out of gray vinyl, and that layer will also have the registration marks. Now the logo we did really, really nicely. There was no trouble with this at all. The gray vinyl was a completely different story. I got just this far into it and realized that these pieces were entirely too small to weed that way. So I reversed course and decided to do a reverse weeding. I put the transfer tape on over the entire thing and scraped it down real well. At that point, you remove the backing and pull away the excess. Now, when you do a reverse weeding, everything is sticky. The transfer tape is sticky, the vinyl is sticky. It's really not my favorite thing to do. And again, because the pieces were so small, it was not an easy task. I did finally get it all weeded and you can see that it turned out nicely in the end. Now I've grabbed my parchment paper and this is where the registration marks come into play. You get them lined up perfectly. And the rest of your design is just going to fall right into place. Go ahead and get that all scraped down. Now we don't need the registration marks anymore. So we're just going to cut them away before we apply the vinyl. Now my shadow did end up extremely small. So I made sure to scrape it all down really well. And there is the end result. You have a shadow, not an offset.